stuff. All right, hey everybody, happy Monday, March 19th. Look who I'm with. I am with Darcel Stevens. Do we do, Bam! Do, we, <laughs> do we do Miss Darcel Stevens? You can do Miss Darcel. All right, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So, uh, this is the best way to kick off a Monday. I'm very excited to have you here. I really am. And so, let us know you can hear us or see us. Uh, that's my biggest concern always. Uh, Jean Ann's on. Thank you, Jean Ann. Let us know you can hear us or see us. I think I've got the mic set. Clay's on. Uh, you guys, as you start popping on, just give me a thumbs up that you can hear us or see us. I reached out to Darcel probably 150,000 times. Yeah. She's, she's busy. You're busy. Bzz. You're busy. Bzz. Um, but we have some, okay, so we got thumbs up so they can hear us and see us. Uh, but you've got an event coming up, and so it was a perfect time for you to come on, I think, and talk about you. Yeah. Um, I, I think that what you do is amazing in our community, and you have Be Vigilant, which we want to talk about that, and I hashtag that too. Uh, so welcome. Well, thank you, Ted. I'm happy to be here. I'm here at the Citrus Club, and I'm not drinking at all. <laughs> That's the first Monday Allegedly, that's the allegedly. I'm allegedly not drinking. It's, it's <laughs> Me just either. water. We we all. <laughs> mine's coffee, so there you go. Yeah. So we are blessed to be in the wine room right now, and we're blessed to have Darcel on, and we have a whole bunch of stuff in store for you guys. I hope you guys got to see the video. Uh, look, our my eyes are at two thirds. So Marquez, if you come on, Tanette's on. Let us know what you think about this angle. Okay. Don't give us a hard time about the windows in the background because you know I have to go with wherever the Citrus Club has me. Uh, it's gracious of them to allow me to be here. So well, very nice, very nice. All right, so give us a little history on you. We all read your bio, but there's a lot to you. There's you've got multi layers to you. Multi layers. <laughs> that means and I'm that old. Voice. That <laughs> means I'm old. You're I'm used. Old. I've been. I've been around. <laughs> you've been around. We've well, all been around. Well, um, what can I say? You know, as you read my bio, I'm a military veteran. I'm a graduate of University of Florida. Uh, I've been go on the Gators, life. Yeah, man. go Gators. Oh, but I'm like, go Gators. Yeah. <laughs> and um, what else? Um, I work at the Parliament House. I've been in the business forever and a day. I started drag probably in professionally probably 1985. Now, how do you don't say? How do you transition from? Did you always know that you wanted to uh, be in drag? That you wanted to be professional in it? And and if so, how did you transition from? Not professional to professional. Well, yeah, I, I, I always knew I wanted to be an entertainer because I sing and I knew I wanted to be on stage. But um, while I was at the University of Florida in ROTC, um, you, those were the days where Don't Ask, Don't Tell wasn't even in existence. <laughs> if you even thought you were gay, you were out. So um, I, I kind of snuck out to the gay bars and became this persona of Darcel. And, um, you know, it's been... It's been really fruitful for me. It's been something that I really love, and uh, it's 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 my alter ego, and um, I'm just I'm just here to be me. Well, you know, it's funny. So I had a lot of people ask me once I I had started to kind of promote this week. Mm -hmm. People are like, "Is is she gonna come in full on drag?" And I said, "Well, I don't know, but I am sure that that takes a lot to put together. It takes a lot. Yeah, now, I can barely comb my hair in the morning. My wife's on here, so she'll she'll tell you." Uh, so imagine trying to get ready and put all of the makeup on and uh, you've got yeah. so much that goes into yeah, your yeah, persona, yeah, so right? Uh, How long does it take you to get ready hours. for a show? So two, two hours. hours. Two hours out of my life, gone. <laughs> you know, it takes and a lot. So, but you, but that. How long does the makeup stay on? You've probably learned a lot of tips that yeah. a lot of the people on here would probably love. Yeah, the, the the makeup stays on pretty. You know, you powder down because there's nothing worse for a black girl to look greasy. Okay, <laughs> I know a lot of people go. Well, I want the shimmer look to look like I'm. You know, I'm wet. <laughs> I don't want to look wet. I want to look matte. You want to look matte, okay? <laughs> and uh, but it takes two hours. And um, for me, it's 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 about the augmentation of you know taking away the masculinity what you see right now and bringing in the feminality. And it takes a lot of contouring and highlighting to downplay a lot of the masculine features of my face. Well, because you're tall, you've got a very deep, resonating voice. And so we talked about that earlier. You were saying you were in Target or Walmart or somewhere, yeah. and you asked the question, and somebody <laughs> peeped their head around the corner and said, is that you, Darcel? Uh, because your, your voice is very distinctive. Uh, but that plays into your, that's just your part of you. That's yeah. how you are. So talk a little bit about the transition, though. So when you, uh, you left the Army, 
Okay. And then, what did you do afterward? What was your next profession? Well, were you... my, I was going to stay into the, in, the mil, in the military as an enlisted person, but yet um, I said, you know, what? I'm going to go to, and get my degree and become an officer. And once I did that, I went to University of Florida. I did get my commission, but they did not branch me what I wanted. I wanted medical service because my bachelor's in psychology. And they said I needed to get at least a master's. And I said, I'm not going into field artillery, which they branched me. So I went into the National Guard. I, was, uh, I made it to a first lieutenant in the National Guard, and then I resigned my commission because they wouldn't give me what I want. Had they given me what I want, I would have been probably retired now from the military. I bet. I'm, 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 a, I'm a fan of the military. I'm a brother of the military. And uh, I have so many friends that are in the military, and I thank them all for their service. But um, that's, that's a part of who Darnell is. And then Darcel came in between while I was at the University of Florida in ROTC. And uh, that was some... That was some what you call creeping time. Creeping? creeping. Yeah. Tell me why you call it creeping time. Because they, you, they, you couldn't let the, the, the officers at the University of Florida of ROTC know that you were dressing as a woman at night. <laughs> Imagine it just, that. It just didn't, it, it didn't mix together. I was like, oil and water, it did not mix. Uh, so but, how did that work back then? Because I, I've always thought that this is such a crazy thing that anybody has to go through. You had, you had to creep, uh, Ted. You really did. You, uh, you had to watch your show. And people looked out for one another. You know, It wasn't like you were on this island by yourself. Once they knew that you had an intention, especially back in those days, people were very happy that you were trying to get your education and sure. they really looked out for you. So if someone came in that, that was scrupulous and started ask, asking about you, there were some gatekeepers at the beginning, at the awesome. front, and uh, they would alert you. And that never happened to me, but there was a, there was a sense of security within in the fold. And uh, I was very grateful to surround myself with some really good people uh, during the 80s and the early 90s. Because even at that time, you had one level where people still weren't comfortable coming, coming out or talking about anything that had to do with whether you were gay. Or, mm -hmm. But then you add the extra level of military in there. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're really trying to tiptoe around or creep around, which is un, it's so unfortunate. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you uh, compare that to what it's like today? Do you feel like we've made a lot of progress in that? Oh my God, that? yes. Um, I was very, very fortunate. I have a good friend. His name is Chad. He's in the Air Force, and he's openly gay. Love it. And um, Chad was the first, I believe, the first openly gay person to be the secretary of the highest-ranking enlisted person in the Air Force. Wow. And I was, I'm so proud of him. And um, I just think about Chad, and I went to his um, ceremony when she got promoted, and this was at the Pentagon. It was about 10 of us came from Orlando. I uh, went to D.C. to see him get promoted. And in the audience um, was his mother, his grandmother. Uh, she's passed on, rest her soul. And uh, at that time, his lover, who was also in the Air Force. But yeah, he got his, his, his strike pinned on by, he's the military police. He got his stripes pinned on by the highest ranking officer in the Air Force. And then what really touched my spirit, coming from where I was, where he, you know, if you even thought you were gay, they would kick you out. Uh, at the Pentagon, the president at that time, Obama, was uh, pinning a Medal of Honor on someone. And as I looked around, I saw this 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 military person in these fatigues, all these, um, uh, and I said, "Who is that?" He had some stars on his his uh, his collar. And later, I found out that that was the Commandant of the Marine Corps. Wow! And to think about it, just to put it in perspective, this is a gay young man that's enlisted that the commandant of the marine corps the highest general of the military police and the air force all were there to give him a promotion that says a lot that says and a it lot. brought it almost brought me to tears oh, well, i mean me chills. and i that's met amazing. and i met the commandant of the marine corps and i shook his hand and things have changed from from being kicked out to having that respect that's the word the respect that that general would come from the president's ceremony of pinning a medal of honor on someone to make it down to yeah, Chad's, amazing. this gay, young, enlisted young man promotion. That says a lot. So I, things have changed tremendously. That's good to hear. Because a lot of times you, all you hear is the negative. And I, I feel like we have made progress. There's yeah. definitely progress yeah. made, even from the 80s to the 90s, yeah. even in the last 10 years, yeah. I feel like we have done yeah. 
as a as a community as a world, we've we still have a lot of work to do. Don't a lot of work. Wrong. A lot of work. But I, I hate to focus on all the work that we haven't done and try to give some kudos mm -hmm. to the work that we have done. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's lots of lots of love. Sandy Cheshire says loved ourselves. Pete Crotty. Pete Crotty. I love me too, baby. Pete Crotty says big question. Do you think I could talk your guest into letting me borrow that shirt? <laughs> I love it. Uh, uh, this is. Uh, <laughs> This is Versace, and it's oh, written somewhere nice. here on here. I want to look. I didn't buy it. Someone gave it to me. <laughs> Versace. It's good to be Mr. Nice. Versace. I think I have on TJ Maxx. We're going to figure that out. In a it's bit. a little loud, but <laughs> it gets you noticed. Lydia Pisano says, hey, Darcel, thanks for your service. Jacqueline Montgomery Jameson says, oh, hello, Miss Darcel. Yeah, There's a few here. Thing, yeah. Mackenzie Renee Clementino. Clementino, I'll yeah. say it whichever way, says, hello, Miss Darcel. You got lots of... Lots of love on here. Eddie's on here. A lot of people on here, which we were talking about. Do you have your color coordinated? You love it. Cindy's my guest on Friday. Uh, no, we did not. We didn't talk. I wasn't sure um, what to wear today because I knew that no matter what, you were going to look awesome. Awesome. Um, and so thanks, thanks again for Thank all those you. comments. You. You'll give it back, Pete. Pete's, uh, Pete's running for office, so he wants to put it out there as, as much color as he can get in his wardrobe. Um, he's awesome. So, all right, so tell us more about, tell me what color you're going to wear Friday. <laughs> I'll let you know, Cindy. Uh, so tell us more about the Pea House, because you have been there, I learned today, 26 years. 26 years. All right, right, so how is it different from when you started, and what did you start as, to what your role is now and what the Pea House is now? Well, when I came on board, I was hired part-time. And that's um, a par Parliament House. Yeah, Parliament House, yeah. Um, and that was uh, 92, I believe, 92. And uh, there was four of us that was hired. And for some reason, I got parlayed into, it parlayed into a full-time job. And mind you, I was working for Hospital Corporation of America. You know, the, the Hospital Corporation of America that had a little bit of trouble uh, under the tutelage of, I won't mention no name, Rick Scott, anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I told you, no old bars. And, and, uh, you do. and so um, I, I got laid off, and um, I was in the marketing department, and I said, you know what, I'm going to go and become a nurse. Okay, I wanted to be a nurse. I said, you know, I may not do nursing, but I would, I would, I would probably you know, be a great administrator. And uh, I tried that, and this thing of drag, drag has always been a staple with me, and I, and I have to give drag its credit. Even during college, drag got, bought me books. This is way before you all had the tablets and everything, books. You can get used books for practically nothing. actually read books and back it, then. And it was, it was always a part of my, life, my lifestyle. And so, um, you know, I was, I was still doing drag at the Parliament House, and they hired me on full time. And um, as I was you know, doing my prerequisites for nursing, which wasn't a lot because I already had my bachelor's, and I said, you know, I think I'm going to do this. And I lied to you not. I went to an autopsy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, no. That's bad. Girl, they had, I'm serious. When <laughs> I was okay. I was okay until they had that cranial saw. Oh. And bitch, when they said. Just the sound of that. When they did that, that I don't remember what happened. They said I passed out. Did you? I, that did it so for that, me. So that was your tell all. That, that did was it for it. me. I said, well, maybe, maybe I can go into hospital administration. <laughs> but the Parliament House then, I gave some offer. Miss P, the longtime MC at the Parliament House, was looking to retire. And um, they offered me a position there. And um, I said, you know what? I'll try it out. And while they were interviewing other MCs, I said, um, you know, I'll, I'll just be, you know, the floater. Because Miss P threw me out there as an MC. She knew I had a gift of gab. And um, she said, I think you should be my replacement. I said, oh, no, I don't want to do that. And I told the owners, I said, oh, I'll try it out for three months. And three months has lasted for 20-some <laughs> years. Yeah, so. Um, How's it changed? It's since? changed a whole lot. Um, I want to say that the, the level and the caliber of the show has remained the same. The continuity of the show is something that I that was instilled in me, as we were talking earlier. Right. I believe there's a level in which we should keep the show professional. Because it's drag doesn't mean it should be any less from you going to a theater. I agree. Uh, a performance arts theater. And we are just an extension of performance art. Uh, yeah, we might be lip syncing somebody else's song, but... Everything but doing that, it with so much passion, and absolutely love, absolutely. It's, it's amazing, absolutely, and um and and those are the standards I keep. But the the change has been, you know, RuPaul Drag Race has uh, has um, ushered in a change. Um, I and I, I have nothing against that show. I love to be making the money that those girls are making. <laughs> 
But the fact of the matter is what you see on television does not represent what I do. Correct. Uh, that is a television show, and there are some fine entertainers who um, are a product of what I do. Um, namely, uh, if you saw All Stars, Kennedy Davenport, that's one of my, she's a former Miss Gay Orlando, a former Miss Parliament House, um, and Shangela, those, all those girls work with us on a regular, well, me at the Parliament House, on a regular basis prior to Drag Race. And there, there are many others that have went through the door of Drag Race. But that has changed the whole spectrum, Ted, of drag. People th seem to think that that's what drag is about. Well, it's it's, it, it feels like it's mainstreamed yeah. in, in a way that that's people like, it's kind of like when um, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy came yeah. out. So all of that kind of mainstream, that thought process. And so, but that's not what, if no, you haven't not. been to a drag show, not. that's not what goes on at a drag show. A typical drag show, our first priority is to make you forget about where you are. We talked and, about that. And all the troubles that you went through. Whatever, your, whatever baggage you came into to a, a drag setting, you leave it at the door. And for that one hour, we transform you into, a, take you into this place where there's nothing but pure entertainment mm -hmm. and enjoyment. Right. And um, there, there are no challenges, there are no, there's nothing in it like what you see on Drag Race, it's just pure entertainment. And that could be in several different forms. We can just do a, a number in which one of your favorite artists is singing, or we can do what we call a lacage show, where we can look like it. Now, I do want to put a plug out that coming up really soon, and check my Facebook page, Miss um, um, under Darcel Stevens, we're doing our encore performance of The Greatest Show. Now, we can't say The Greatest Showman because we would get sued and we would have to cease and desist. <laughs> but we're, we don't want that. We're doing, uh, it was so fabulous. Costumes and everything of The Greatest, inspired by The Greatest Showman. And, uh, which but, I haven't seen yet, which you the music's amazing. It. No, I've not seen it. Shut the hell up. <laughs> you haven't seen it. No, I don't go to the movies that often. <sighs> I'm waiting for it to come out. Before, but, before hold on, wanna, Wilfred says, Miss... Miss P has an art tribute in Ivanhoe Village by Washburn. She sure does. She okay. sure does. She sure so does. that's the, is that the one where you all are, ser and that's the other thing about the drag show. It's not just, like, first of all, the, you talked about how it takes two hours to prep, mm -hmm. but then there's everything else involved. And if you're going, if you're doing a show like that, which is based on the greatest show, XYZ, whatever that means, um, then you're doing more. You're, you're costuming it um, mm -hmm. a, a, about that particular movie or that particular show. Charlie, Charlie says, Charlie Steffi Darcel, you've kept us entertained for so many years. And Jacqueline, again, Jameson says, amazing transformation story, love it. Yeah, the, um, the shows that we do, we do drag on a different levels. We, we, unlike most places who just maybe just present themselves in drag, and I'm sure they're doing a great job of it. I like to take my cast on uh, a journey. And that includes not only the conventional drag, which you encounter when you see a drag show, but we also do themes. We also right. do theater. Um, we've done things from Moulin Rouge to Dream Girls. Right now, I said we're doing The Greatest Showman, a, a tribute to the great, I mean, the greatest show, a tribute to the greatest showman. Uh, and we do things of that nature. We might do decades shows, and but. Drag is, is not this, it's this. Correct. It's, it's huge, and that's one of the things that Miss P taught me. Um, I'll leave you with a word, something that Miss P taught me that all, I always pass down to ge younger generations. People are, most drag queens are so apt to regurgitate what they see on television or, right. or video. Miss P taught me, she said, interpret the song the way you feel it, and when you interpret it, Never underestimate the intelligence of your audience. Great. And that's so true. So whatever you feel, you don't, it don't have to be, you, you, if you're in a Rihanna number or a Beyonce number, it don't have to be a regurgitation of the video, but that song may uh, make you feel totally different or convey something Correct. not even thought of in the video. And you have to trust that the audience that's sitting before you is intelligent enough to take that journey with you. And that's what my girls do. We, that's it. exactly what we do. All right, so talk about everything that you end with, any message, anything you have on social media. Uh, talk about be vigilant, because that's obviously something important Ooh. to you. So in your bio, you talked about being a community leader. Well, I said leader, but uh -huh. you're an advocate, an activist. 
uh, talk about that because obviously that's very important to you because every single time that's your tagline be vigilant and then there's something out of that uh, something after that but basically be be vigilant is what you put out there so talk a little bit about that well my tagline is uh, let us be vigilant but not afraid and um, I take I took that from the final speech of um, Barack Obama and I think out of all the things I heard him say that stuck with me and it resonated with me because I knew that no matter what the future held, we were going to be in some uncharted waters, whether it would have been Hillary or the current resident of the White House. And uh, I just couldn't be afraid. I had to be vigilant. I had to just get somewhat angry and just be determined to make a difference. And that is from a grassroots level all the way to a national level. And one thing I've learned here in the great state of Florida is that um, every vote counts. Every vote counts. And I, 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 don't, I, I always tell the young kids, mm -hmm. it comes down to the common denominator. You can hit like on Facebook 50 billion times, but it's not going to change anything unless you get up and go vote. Right. And uh, that's one thing I want to try to empower the next generation. And um, I really feel that if we're going to make some changes, you've got to get out and let your voice be heard. And there's only two ways you can do that. You can get on the corner and shout from the mountaintop, or you can get yourself in the polls and you can vote. Correct. And influence your next person to vote. So that's part of being vigilant, is getting out there and being really proactive and making, not only transitioning from, yeah, I'm going to vote, I'm going to put a little sign on Facebook that I'm going to vote, or to registering to vote, but actually following through and going to vote. Correct. Yeah, and there's so vote. many ways to, especially in our city, I feel like the city of Orlando, comparatively, we have a lot of, hey, Jen, she says hello, boys. Hey. Um, we have a lot of opportunity here to be vigilant. There are a lot of opportunities for us to get involved, to do things. And one of those things that you do, we're going to talk about, because I want to make sure I don't take the focus off what we originally talked about, which is babes and bonnets. Yeah. Um, because that is such a, a great fundraiser for an amazing organization. And there are many amazing organizations in town. One of the things that we do on the show is try to highlight these organizations that have People don't know about them. Like if I say Orlando Youth Alliance, which we're going to talk about, which is the benefactor of Babes in Bonnets, people are like, what does that mean? How? And so there are ways in between the election for you to still, you, just because you, you, you've registered to vote and you've got two or three years or four years, depending on what you're voting for, don't sit back for those two or three or four years. There are ways to get involved in the community and make a difference with your voice, with your money, with your time, with your resources. And one of those ways is to get involved in fundraisers like Babes in Bonnets. Yeah. And another way is to support organizations like Orlando mm -hmm. Youth Alliance. So let's talk a little bit about Babes in Bonnets, which is coming up on March 26th mm -hmm. at the Parliament House. And the funds go to, uh, they're, they're raising money for Orlando Youth Alliance. Mm -hmm. So we're going to let Darcel give us a little background on that and how right. that all works. Yeah, um, Orlando Youth Alliance, a wonderful organization right here in Orlando, Florida, grassroots. Uh, and they're the fabulous resource um, center. Um, they do everything from facilitating from kids who've run away. Uh, trying to get them back with their parents or getting them established in their education because we know that an educated citizen is a productive citizen. Agreed. And um, we don't want these kids on the street trying to make ends meet. And the Orlando Youth Alliance is doing a great job of uh, making sure that these kids have a safe haven and, and also have a safe mind. And I'm real happy about Babes and Bonnets. It started 20 years ago with Carmela Marcella Garcia. And, I love uh, that name. Yeah. And she, it was, uh, it was a probably, I think the first couple of years it went to prenatal care, uh, which it was uh, helping infants in local hospitals. And then uh, Carmela moved away and it became, I don't know how it dropped in my lap, but it dropped in my lap. Because uh, you're vigilant. I, yeah, you're I, I became it. very passionate about it. And it's for the kids. And let me tell you something, when you hear these kids talk, when you hear a 13 or a 16 year old talk about what, how they came to Orlando and how this organization literally saved their lives, you have no choice but to pull out your wallet and say, how much? Correct. You know? Because they are youth. And 
old folks like myself, I didn't have anybody. You know, He's I not had, old because I'm his age. So I had to wander through this world by myself and Correct. thank God I had some folks around me. But the Orlando Youth Alliance through Babes and Bonnets. Babes and Bonnets is a wonderful fundraiser in which Carmela had asked some queens to create some bonnets and the audience would come and they would bid on the bonnets and the proceeds would go to the charity. Um, since then it has evolved, evolved into a community-wide event. Well, this year we have 20 organizations in honor of the 20th anniversary of wow. Babes and Bonnets in which they have created a bonnet, anything from a baseball cap to something elaborate, which you'll see in just We're a second. See in a minute. It's beautiful. And, um, <laughs> and not only do they make the bonnets, but they pair those bonnets with different items. Um, we've everything from round trip tickets to um, which I the Citrus Club is offering. That's right. Going to do some Dinner wonderful for two. things. Dinner for, Dinner for two. two. And you know, just elaborate gifts that's paired with the bonnet to make the bonnet a little bit more enticing. And um, I'm really happy to say last year, this, this grassroots fundraiser, in an hour and a half, we started out with like $2,500 um, 20 years ago. We mushroomed up to $28,000 last year. And uh, we're hoping to equal that or exceed it this year. And I'm, I'm just ecstatic because once we give that money over to them, it's 100% of the proceeds go to them. You know that that work is is doing good. Absolutely. And uh, and I can see the fruits of my labor when I get a car. Hey, Miss Darcell, I just graduated from high school. Or hey, Miss Darcell, I'm at a community college, and I'm telling you, it it that makes it all right. Work That's it really it, does. It does. It, really it touches does does. your soul and your mm -hmm. heart. And um, Tasha Long, who is one of my favorite performers, says, "So glad we have Darcell to be a voice in our community." Oh, I love Tasha. She's Long. amazing. Another amazing reason why Orlando's great. All right, so how do they, so let's show them the bonnet because I think it's important. And this is the grassroots part we were talking about. So this bonnet is absolute. So when he said bonnet, I had no idea what he was it's, talking about. It's really simple. It's a, <laughs> it's a demure It is the furthest bonnet. thing from simple it's, on the My hat. This is the simple you little. You might have to back up. This, oh, Look at this that. This is the simple little bonnet. And my friends at Costume Couture. Look said, how gorgeous that is. This is a simple little bonnet. Just a little. <laughs> hey, Ted, come back over. Come on. Oh, am I going to wear it? Yeah. Here we go. All right, here we go. I'm, I'm, I'm mad. I, I, you can mess up my hair. Let me see. Here we go. This the way. Listen, you got. I trust you. Jesus, that is. It's, that's it's heavy. A, it's a little heavy. It has a strap on it. <laughs> wow. All right, I'm either in Three Musketeers or I'm in Hello, Dolly. Wait, what did you say earlier? Oh, uh, okay, okay. That is so heavy, yep. you guys. Now oh. turn, turn to the side. Yep. Oh, look at that. Yes, man. I might wear this in the club now today. Turn, turn to the side, let the bow. Oh, yes. look, look. Yes. Oh, that bow is beautiful. Yes. Look at that. Snap. That Snap. just added 40 Snap. pounds to me. Snap. <laughs> you have to suffer for your art. You have to suffer. I have to suffer. Suffer for my art. That is awesome. Well, that is beautiful. You have to have a strong neck. <laughs> <laughs> I got a strong neck. Gorgeous. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, be, it looks good with the outfit. Even. I'll be wearing. I'll, I'll be wearing this for Babes and Bonnets, and um, I haven't decided if I'm going to auction it off. But so I'm, what happens when you auction it off? Well, this Do they get to keep it? Of course. Oh, you get. To we keep place the, the bonnet, bonnet on their head. Oh, nice. Yeah, and they sit nice. in the audience with these bonnets on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and some of them that are is huge, heavy. and some of them are large. I mean, they're, 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 like, they're just astronomical, and they pair with all these gifts. Um, last year, I bid, you know, I even bid on the bonnets. Of I, course. Um, Did you get one? I, yeah. A, a friend of mine, we, we got uh, tickets for, t it was two tickets to go s to a taping of The View in uh, nice, New York. Nice, nice. And, uh, and because my schedule was so hectic, I didn't get to cash it in. You didn't need to go. Well, I'm still going because <laughs> I know, you know, I know people. <laughs> you know people. I know people. I know you know people. And that was awesome, by the way. Yeah. All right, so we're going to share all of this contact information, Darcel's comp yeah. contact information, how to... Oh, can I say one other thing? Please, you say if, whatever if, you if want. If you can't come to Babes and Bonnets, go to my page on Facebook. It's Darcel Stevens, D-A-R-C-E-L. S T E V E N S, and just scroll down, and you'll see a link with Carmela's picture on it. Make a donation, okay? Make a. This is it's community wide. It's worldwide now, thanks to social media. 
And uh, last year, my own line campaign did very, very well, and I wanted to do equally this year. So um, if you can't make it, make a donation, hey, 20 bucks or whatever, movie money. Why make not? a donation. Right? Make a donation. So, um, yeah, we're going to share all of that information. I promise when we post the video, I'll put all the URLs, the mm -hmm. contact information for Darcel, how to get to your Facebook page, how to get to Babes and Bonnets, and if you want to register, you want to participate, which you should, buy tickets. Uh, I assume it's tickets you have to buy, yeah? No, it's at the box office. Oh, just so come it's just that they'll come to the box first office. Serve, first come, first serve. Okay. We drink, we I'll, give money. I'm going to be there on March. Oh, you are coming. I'm coming. Listen, okay. I'm, I'm committed. I can't wear that hat and not show up. No, bonnet you gotta have a bonnet. Got are you are you are you crafty? No, no, I'm not. I can't even make my own drink, Darcel. We've already established that, I hope. Uh, so we're gonna share yeah, he, you're dry. Can that, I ask you a that's question? That's the worst that's the worst sound you want to hear at a that party. That is the worst. So we're we're gonna fix that. So any parting words of wisdom for them um, before we head out? Yeah, just like my tagline says, you know, um, you know, you know, try to be vigilant, you know, don't be afraid. I mean, I know it's some scary times out there and life seems like everything's going to hell in a hand basket, basket but you know, we, we must be vigilant, but not afraid. And right. just get out there and, you know, kick, kick ass. And, kick ass. You know, somebody standing your way, just plow them over and make a difference. That's right. it. All right. Yeah. Well, we love you. Thank you so much Thank for you so all much. you do. Thank you. In the community, you just make a huge impact all the time. You really do. And I think you can tell all the love that you have for all the people that are up and down. And we'll all respond to that after the show. But thank you guys for tuning in. We love you so much. Happy Monday. And let's all go out and see the show. Let's go out and see Babes and Bonnets. Let's, let's participate. Let's make a difference together. So love you. Mwah. See you later.